Quite frankly, Trump's election emboldened a lot of really messed up people. In some ways, it normalized it. Similar to how when Obama got elected, it somewhat normalized the idea that, hey, black people can be successful. Trump's election has it's allowed people with horrible views to feel validated. People who would have never had a platform before. People who have, yeah, they've usually been silenced because it's the crap that we've tried to rid ourselves of uh, because it's a blight on our history. Trump's election took the blinders off the majority of the country and made us realize how sexist and racist we still are. And some people just haven't quite realized it yet. And you're just all like, no, no, it can't be that bad. Yeah, well, it, it is, and it used to be hidden, but it isn't anymore. So how do we resolve it? I mean, when we're at a point when just the word privilege sets people off like, like, I don't know, um, or if you say white people, it, it just kind of sets people off. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to have any sort of reasonable discussion when just those things freak people out. But yeah, for years and years, we've thought that we've come so far. Again, with especially the election of Obama. And then the reality of things comes and smacks us in the face with the election of Trump. Good old misogynist, racist, sexist Trump, who's also a warmonger now, thanks to Bolton, as we slowly watch our country, in some ways, become a corporatocracy. There's a good reason why Biff from Back to the Future was modeled after Donald Trump. And that caricature in Back to the Future Part 2 essentially runs the country. How about that? This administration makes the Bush administration look like a, a beautiful utopia. I mean, at least the Bush administration didn't embolden the same kind of mindset that was used to enslave black people. Bush may have been a goofball, and he may not have been good at public speaking, but he wasn't stupid, and he didn't embolden filth. But hey, let's laugh. <laughs> Donald Trump is the epitome of privilege, and the abuse of one's privilege. That's why he pisses so many people off including people across the globe. It's the ultimate middle finger to those who are suffering, or those who have struggled for a long time because of the demographic that they are. And the fact that he pisses people off is, in actuality, how he won the election. People may have disliked Hillary, but not enough to actually vote for someone like Trump. For some, voting for Trump was an attempt to virtue signal that you're going to stick it to the man. It's, you know, faux rebellion. What happened is that Trump had people completely unglued. People became utterly hysterical. He had all the attention from how outrageous he could be. The more outrageous, the more popular he became. It's the white, privileged, misogynistic, sexist, male version of how Madonna built her career. And it worked fantastically for him. And that's the primary reason for people's continued support of him. To this particular segment of Trump voters, other people's lives, at least those who aren't part of the, the majority demographic anyway, and especially other people's feelings and mental health, are all a giant piece of entertainment for them. As long as Trump's actions don't affect straight white Christian males, it's time to laugh at the snowflakes. And in that regard, we've proven to be a society that's worse than the one depicted in The Truman Show. Because with this, it's all about the enjoyment of other people's suffering. At least with The Truman Show, it wasn't mostly about people's suffering. There were other things that people enjoyed. And for those who could either lose the most, or know a lot of people who could lose the most, seeing the so-called patriots still supporting Trump with big smiles and laughing at anyone who opposes them feels like a quarter of the country eternally saying <laughs> Pona snowflake today. <laughs> <laughs>